Hi, Paul. How you doing? There's a boy by the name of Larry McNeely. He played five-string banjo, and finally he went on to be with Glenn Campbell on his show. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, Larry was about, I guess, about 15 years old, and, I, you know, he I, I, he needed the exposure, and where we lived in the folly, well, I, I, you know, this, this, we had a few radio stations we played, you know, but mm-hmm. I realized he needed um, a nationwide exposure, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, I, I brought him down here to Nashville and uh, introduced him to some people. And and Acuff, uh, Mr. Acuff, heard, about, heard him play, you know. And he says, well, listen, this kid's good, you know. And so uh, Mr. Acuff took Larry on the road to, to give him some exposure, you know, to have him out. But he put him on the ground on a time or two. Mm-hmm. And me too, and that got in my blood. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I talked it over with my wife, and of course, Roy told me he says you'd do good in Nashville, Charlie, if you if you thought about it. So don't burn no bridges, but said you would do good as a musician. And so I talked my wife, talked to my wife about it, and we 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 made up our minds, and we we moved to Nashville. And so a couple of months after we moved to Nashville, Roy hired me. <laughs> the rest of the boys in the band they had other jobs. Roy was going to quit the road, you know. Mm. And Opryland, uh, they started building Opryland at that time. And so Roy came to me and I and he said, would you boys think you'd like to work the, the Opryland Park? And he said, I might could, uh, you know, he said, I'm going to quit the road because he's getting some age on him, you know, and he wanted to get off the road. And so uh, he took me and Alvaro to the uh, uh, Opryland Park Opry manager at that time, who became over the park, and he introduced us to, to Mr. Wendell and said, these two boys would like to have a job with you when you get your park done. And so Mr. Wendell hired us both right there. He said, well, if you boys would like to work with me, he said, I might have to ask you to sweep up sometimes. <laughs> 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 and uh, rather than play music, and I, and I said, well, we'll find a way you can, you know. <laughs> People would come out to see him. I, I've, I've stood on stage and see thousands of people that just take of Mr. Acuff was, and the Smoky Mountain Boys had drawn, you know, to come see just the one group, you know. Sings uh, the songs of the Grand Ole Opry? It was the first album I'd ever cut with, you know, a, a superstar, you know. Yeah. And I was just a, you know, meekly musician. I didn't feel like I was qualified, but. Oh. Somehow I made it through it because when he started to sing, he said, "Now, boys, I, I know my part, and, and 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 if we can do this the first time, we're going to do it." And I thought, "Well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm subject to make a mistake, subject to play the wrong chords, you know." Somehow I made it through it, and, and we did the album in two hours, Paul. Really, one take cake. That's exactly right. I'll never forget it. We, we been, you know, we. I couldn't believe it. We did that album in two hours. Mm-hmm. Where I know my part, and he did. Got in there and learned theirs real quick. <laughs> the precious jewel. Yeah, me, me, Oswald and I, we, we cut that one time, you know, with with uh, me lead singing and, and Oswald singing tenor. And uh, we played it for Roy after we got it cut. After we got, cut the album, I took the album over to Roy's house and, and asked him how he liked it. And he said that he said you and Oswald did better than we did. we did on the first cut on on the precious jewel. He really liked it. Roy wrote Roy wrote the song, you know. Anyway, and he said he wrote that song uh, after that. And Rachel, sister, you know, they used to have bass brother Oswald and his sister Rachel. You know, Rachel was in the back seat of the car. She co- she copied down the words that he was telling her as he drove, and and he didn't realize that he had almost the same tune. As uh, another tune, but he'd heard uh, Wimberly Cooper and her sister sang a, a song the night before, a Rome County Prison. That's what it was. He almost, you know, put put the same tune to it. He didn't. He didn't realize he was doing it, but that, like, you know, it happened by accident. You know, I did uh, a few of Acuff's songs. You know, his signature songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, on on another album, uh, I think it was 
uh, Charlie Collin sings Roy Acuff, you know, that I enjoyed doing. Yeah. Now, there was a few songs under, I think maybe one song that Carl Butler wrote that, that I really enjoyed doing was My Tears Don't Show, that Acuff used to do a lot, you know. I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed singing it. I, I knew Carl Butler real well, you know, and mm. anyway, and, and Mr. Acuff, when he, when he done that song, I always, you know, when we was on stage, I would always think of Carl when he'd be singing because Roy could really put the feeling to it. You know, Mr. Acuff, one time, I know in particular, when I was taking a break on the Dobro, he turned around to me and said, Charlie, you sing good. He said, I can't sing good, but I can sell it. <laughs> Those old medicine shows and things, yeah. Mr. Acuff, he, he told me one time that where he really got his training mostly. And they, they didn't have no microphones, you know. Mm. And that's how coming to sing so loud and to, to so that people could hear it. Mr. Draco, he sang with with feeling and and, and sincerity. Yeah, he, he knew how to handle the show. The Warbash Cannonball. That that particular song, Mr. Draco, he, he learned it from uh, the Carter family. They were credited with writing. He sang it around Knoxville, Tennessee, over there, and he said. Uh, you got a lot of requests for it, you know. Mm. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, when he went to the Opry then, he, he decided, you know, the fir- well, the first song he sung on the Opry was a great speckled bird, you know. Yeah. And uh, then he, the, the, when he sang the Wabash Cannonball, they would book him out as a singer of the train songs. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on, Paul. It's such a privilege. I, I appreciate it, my friend. And, and you keep up the good work because you're a young man and you're 